Hi kids, welcome to day 14 of Storytime with Anne. After our story, we'll have music from Auntie Mwiza followed by Bible poetry with Jiko. The title of our story today is Selfish Billy from African Adventure Stories by Dr. Sostin Mfune. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, thank you for today. Be with us as we go through our story. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There was an uproar again. In fact, it seemed there was an uproar of some sort for much of the time. If Billy did not get exactly what he wanted, when he wanted it, there was a quarrel and then an uproar. If his brothers and sisters played with his things, Billy would behave in a most unusual way. At times, he even made threats with a spear. The way he behaved, it was unbelievable that he was nine years old. Daddy and Mommy continually urged him to change his ways. The words seemed to go in through one ear and come out the other. Billy was not all bad. He liked gardening. For example, he had three banana plants which grew tall and healthy, and he washed them with pride. The fruit would be ready in a matter of three months. Billy hoped to eat the bananas, preferably alone. What caused this particular uproar was that Daddy, a teacher, had announced that the family would be transferred in a month's time to another school. Normally, a boy of Billy's age would have been excited by such news. His twin sister Stella was excited. Billy, of course, was thinking that someone else would enjoy his bananas. But Daddy, what about my bananas? Billy's eyebrows wrinkled into a frown. I cannot and I will not let someone else eat my bananas. They are the fruits of my labor. Listen, Billy, you've enjoyed many things you haven't worked for, Daddy said. Look, I planted those peach trees. He pointed out through the window. It's still unfair, Billy insisted. Those bananas are mine. I worked hard to make them grow. Those words, mine and I, made Lucifer become the devil, pointed out Daddy. The devil, yes, but I'm speaking about my bananas, Billy snapped. With that, he went out and banged the door behind him. No one is going to eat my bananas, he muttered to himself. Daddy and Mommy looked very concerned. Daddy looked through the window, and there was Billy standing in the garden. As Billy stood looking at his bananas, something came to mind. Aha! This is a good plan. He took a good look at the banana stems. Wait till we are about to leave, he whispered to himself. During the weeks that followed, Packing was the main activity. One day, while the family was packing, they heard a knock at the door. Daddy went out to see who it was. Who's there? Stella asked from inside, peeping through the door crevice. It's our friend, the postman. After some time, Daddy entered waving a telegram in hand. We are leaving the day after tomorrow, Daddy announced, putting the telegram in his pocket. The news seemed to put a new strength into the family, and packing went on with added excitement. But Billy seemed to have remembered something. He looked through the window into the storeroom attached to the kitchen. I must put my plan into action today, he muttered to himself. Slipping out unnoticed, Billy went into the storeroom, and there he found what he wanted, an opened fertilizer bag. He filled a small tin with the fertilizer and carefully, making sure no one saw him, went to his bananas. Billy knew exactly what fertilizer did if placed too near to a plant, and he did just that. He exposed the roots and put fertilizer on the roots and then covered them. Then he watered them. No one will know what killed the bananas. The day the removal lorry came, Billy noticed his plan had worked. The banana leaves appeared as if somebody had put fire under them. With a scornful look, 
he went into the house to help finish the packing. Later, as the lorry pulled away, Billy felt a great deal of satisfaction. The family spent one year at the new place. Then the strangest thing happened. The teacher who had come to replace Billy's father at the old school went for extra study. So you can guess what happened. The removal of Lori came again, and this time drove them back to their old home. During the journey in the lorry, Billy was hoping that his plan had not worked and that the bananas had not died. But it had worked, and he was very, very sorry. Billy, Dad tapped him on the shoulder. Your friends are looking for you. Why are you so sad? Then Daddy suddenly asked in a surprised tone, What's wrong? Where are the bananas? I'm sorry, Daddy. Billy had to explain what he had done before the family had left the year, the year before. You could have been eating bananas by now, Daddy said, holding Billy's hand. I'm going to plant other banana trees. If only I can find the seedlings, Billy said, looking at his father. But we might move again, Daddy said, looking at Billy and squeezing his hand a little. I know that, but I'm planting them for the people who will live in the house after I leave. Daddy was very happy. Billy had become excited too. He had learned an, imp an important lesson, to think of others. And that brings us to the end of our story. Our verse for today is... Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. <laughs>